Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of learning to let go of things that are out of your control. Trying to control every possible outcome of your life leads to disappointment, frustration, and exhaustion. Have you ever noticed that the more you try to control everything around you, the more things spiral out of control and take you further away from your desired outcome? The reason for this is because the need to control everything around you roots in fear. Fear that if we don't give up control, that we won't get what we want. The truth is, we can only control one thing in our lives, ourselves. We can control our own attitudes, thoughts, and actions, but when it comes to other people or trying to micromanage every possible situation, this will always lead to disappointment because some things are out of our control and in the hands of a higher power, which some people refer to as God or the universe. Successful people know that they must rely solely on faith once they've set their intentions and taking all the necessary steps to make their goals happen. As the saying goes, let go and let God. On this special edition of my show, I put the spotlight on the winners of my contest of the top fan supporter of the month who won a guest spot on my show. The winners of the contest are Jason Schultz and musical artists Never Falling Under. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I'm doing amazing. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being my top supporter fan for the month and winning this spot. There's a lot of people that want to be on my show and you won the spot. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm glad that you guys chose me to be here. So my name is NFU, that stands for Never Falling Under. And I do many things, but just to name a few, I'm an artist, engineer, songwriter, a and &R. Um, and I'm also a business owner, CEO, so I do many things, as I said, but that's a, that's a couple, just to name a few. I want to say thank you so much for being a great supporter. You're the winner of my contest for one of my top fans and supporters of the month. So congratulations on winning the spot, the coveted spot. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is a chance for you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and what you do. Uh, yeah, well, basically, I'm, I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a storyteller. I... You know, I write scripts, working on a few novels that are still in progress, poems, short stories. So, you know, any way I can kind of entertain people, tell stories through words, somehow that's kind of what I do, so. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have musical artists never falling under. Hello and welcome to my show. How are you doing? Great, and you? I'm doing amazing. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being my top supporter fan for the month and winning this spot. There's a lot of people that want to be on my show and you won the spot. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm glad that you guys chose me to be here. So this is your opportunity to tell our viewers who you are and what you do. Awesome. So my name is NFU, that stands for Never Falling Under. And I do many things, but just to name a few, I'm an artist, engineer, songwriter, a and R, um, and I'm also a business owner, CEO, so I do, do many things, as I said, but that's a, that's a couple, just to name a few. Nice. Uh, look at you, CEO, business person. Okay. <laughs> you're definitely making moves, and I heard you're also touring, like you're touring the world right now, so talk to All us right. about that. Yes, um, it's been great. Um, I can't complain. Touring has really, you know, changed my life. I've met a lot of new different people, been in a lot of different environments, and also got a lot of new great opportunities. Um, but touring and traveling has just became a big part of my life, and I love it now so much, just how I could, you know, every day have a different lifestyle to enjoy, different people, it's great. Mm -hmm. And how did you develop a love for music? Uh, I developed a love for music. I first started dancing. Um, I was on America's Got Talent years ago. Oh, okay. So um, in Savannah, Georgia, those were my auditions where I, um, I found my love through dancing. I got a little injury and then I started creating music and expressing myself through music. And that's also when I found my love through music as well. But I originally started dancing. Very interesting. And describe your musical style to us. So my musical style is very diverse, but I would say energetic. So it's very good for like different audiences and all types of, you know, energies. It's, it's very different, diverse, genuine, you know, sound. Mm -hmm. And what would be your dream collaboration? Who would you love to work with and why? 
I would definitely love to work with uh, Drake the most, and that's oh. due to compatibility and the energy we would both have on a record. Um, and I definitely think that'd be great also for everybody to hear and enjoy like worldwide. Oh, Drake. Okay. Well, we're from Toronto, so. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Toronto. <laughs> I don't know if you see the CN Tower back here. So when you said Drake, I'm I like, do. okay. <laughs> That's a Shout great job. <laughs> so who are some of the people that you're um, touring with right now? Okay. So um, I just did a 20 city tour uh, with quality control and a couple different management slash labels. I'm also now starting on the We Outside tour coming up in July. And that's going to be with a couple people, um, just to name a few, BWA Ken, It's Gorgeous Music, um, and a couple different big names that we have a lot of great things going on as, as far as, you know, with these tours. Mm -hmm. And has, you know, with coronavirus and everything like that, how did you adapt as a mus musical artist? I know coronavirus has affected a lot of people um, mm -hmm. in different ways, especially throughout, you know, these hard times. Um, but thankfully, I've been able to grind through the situation and also arise from certain situations, but it's been a great way like for me to stay busy. I've just been traveling and, you know, working on other businesses and I also started my own new business. So just doing a lot of different things to stay productive and busy. Mm -hmm. And where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself similar to a position of Jay-Z as far as business and music. Um, I could definitely see myself running a lot of businesses, working with many labels, doing a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what kind of steps did you take to make your platform known? Because you said you were on America's Got Talent with dancing. So what did you do to kind of put your music out there? Because, of course, there are so many people that want to do music, but they don't, they're not recognized or they're not taking the right steps. So what advice for, do you have for them to kind of take their career and make their music known? I would say every creative is great in their own way. So stay great in your lane. And through all the great matters and sacrifices, it'll be worth it. But just don't let anybody stop you from your greatness. But as far as a couple steps maybe, or like a little formula, just start investing in yourself, start networking more and build a lot of relationships. Relationships are very important, especially when it comes to this business. Mm -hmm. And you also said you're an entrepreneur and business owner. So what kind of business do you own? Okay, so my new business is called All You Desire and it's a catering concierge service. And what we do is we provide different experiences for different crowds and different audiences. So not necessarily only, let's say, for like a boat day if you needed a yacht, but also like jets and mansions and helping you get a venue for your birthday party or helping you run an event or even just getting you security services, bulletproof vehicles, different things that you might need to have a great experience. Mm -hmm. And one thing that, you know, stands out about you, I feel like you're very focused. You you, look, you seem like you're very determined and focused. So, you know, where does that passion come from? I mean, the passion comes from just going through a lot as far as not only through this business, but in my lifetime, um, I've been through a lot of hardships. So I believe that when I started living through greatness, and that's exactly what I live through every day and through music, it changed my life, you know, because everything just seems to just flow more smoother and it just feels better. And also it just is a little bit smoother to accomplish things. And that's a great feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it led you here, right? On my show. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I love it. I, I've been watching your show for a while. Um, even when you had Nikki Jam and a couple other great uh, people on here, I've been watching it and I just like to like the purpose. And that's why I like doing interviews like these because we all have our purpose and we just need to find what that purpose is and then help others spread their purpose as well. And then everything else will just, like I said, fall into place with the work of God and with hard work, of course, you know. Absolutely. And that ties into my intro. My intro today was all about, you know, letting go and letting God. Like once you do the work and you set your intention and you're, you've done everything, you just have to let it go and trust the universe that it's going to happen. So that actually oh, totally ties into my intro. Yeah. So, you know, it's crazy though, Dario. I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, no, but okay. I just made a video the other day and people don't understand that your intentions, your morals and your principles are going to take you very far. And what I mean by that is back in the day, you know, there was a lot more genuineness. There was a lot more love and support. We all need to come together, love, support each other, help each other become greater. That's the true meaning of greatness as well. Like 
we can't do this alone. We're a big world, but we have to work all together to do greater things for each other. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to touch on that topic because I feel like these days, a lot of people aren't focusing on things like that. That is really more important than material things. This is just values, how you were raised and how you do things. And that's gonna take you very far in life, like I said. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that. I had the uh, co-founder of Netflix on my show last week and I was talking to him about, you know, I created this platform in my show because I didn't feel that there was enough inspirational, motivational content out there. Um, and also, the celebrities I interview, it's all about their journey and the hardships. People just see their success, they see their Instagram, they see the jets and cars, but they don't know the struggle that it took to get there. So that's what I really wanted to showcase on my show. That's why I created this platform. So I completely agree with you, um, what you were saying before. Where can people connect with you on social media and learn more about your music and your business? Awesome, yes, you guys could connect with me on social media as far as Instagram. It'd be never falling under exactly how it's spread out. And on Twitter, it'd be NVR falling under. And for the business page, it'd be all you desire on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And as far as hearing all the music and enjoying all of our content and everything, you can go ahead and type n.f.u in all platforms and you can find all of our stuff as well as YouTube, NFU TV. And as I said, every other platform, you can go ahead and put n.f.u and you'll find all the greatness you'll need to see. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a pleasure. And yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for you so being much. a great supporter. And I really appreciate all the love and support. So thank you. And I'm so glad you could make it here today. I'm, I'm glad you guys had me here. I'm very thankful. Thank you so much. God bless <laughs> you guys. And more greatness to everybody watching this. And to everybody that's tuned in. Like I said, keep making greatness, man. There's, uh, every day is a great day to be great. You know what I'm saying? Next up on the show, we have Jason Schultz. Jason, thank you for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing amazing. And I want to say thank you so much for being a great supporter. You're the winner of my contest for one of my top fans and supporters of the month. So congratulations on winning the spot, the coveted spot. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. I feel honored to be one of your fans. So. But this is a chance for you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and what you do. Uh, yeah, well, basically, I'm I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a storyteller. I, you know, I write scripts, working on a few novels that are still in progress, poems, short stories. So, you know, any way I can kind of entertain people, tell stories through words somehow. That's kind of what I do. So, mm -hmm. and I know that you're a big movie buff. What's yeah. your favorite genre to write, and what are your, some of your favorite movies? Uh, well, I kind of mix and match a bit. I mean, I, I write a lot of like specific genre films, like sci-fi, action, horror, but I always add a bit of comedy in anything. So I don't like anything that's too dark and serious all the time. So I like to mix things up with a little bit of laughs and stuff like that. Um, favorite all time is Back to the Future and Casablanca. So I mean, that kind of gives a mixture of who I am storytelling-wise. Nice. And I know that you made the decision to go back to school um, recently. And so talk to us about that experience and, you know, wh what are you planning on doing after you finish school? Yeah, I went back to uh, focus on film study. So it's a mixture of film theory, uh, which kind of gives me a better idea of themes and, you know, deep diving into movies and then also some physical actual filmmaking uh, abilities and skills and tests as well. So. It's, I've always loved film, but I've never really had any of the education for it, so I wanted to do that. And it, you know, it helps me find connections in the industry out here. Our industry in this little city is starting to boom. So I'm hoping that in a year, year and a half when I graduate, it can either lead me you know, to making connections with people working in films or have people actually want to make my films at some point. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And what's your creative process? Because I know I, I went to school for journalism. I'm a journalist and writing sometimes, you know, sometimes you have a writer's block. <laughs> so what's your creative process like? Yeah, I mean, if writer's block kicks in, I usually just throw some music on. I have a lot of different playlists. I'll just throw something in and usually a, a random song will just either kickstart a scene in my head and I'll suddenly I'll just picture a movie scene either if it's even for a novel it plays out like a movie in my head but it just it, it comes to me so then I'll, so I'll, sit, I'll pick up my phone i'll make notes i'll start writing the scene out the dialogue you know whatever i see in my head and then i kind of listen to that song and repeat for a while until i get sick of it and then i can move on to the next thing but yeah so anytime i'm blocked usually just either throw on music or i'll throw in one of my old favorite movies and they kind of just help me realize why i want to do what i want to do so 
Absolutely. And describe to us what your dream job would be like and who are some actors that you would put into the movie, your top actors that you put into your own movie. <laughs> oh, top actors. Uh, well, yeah, dream job would be, I guess, to write and direct my own movies. Um, top actors is tough. I mean, I've always been a huge fan of Michael J. Fox, for example. I know he doesn't act much these days, but he's a Canadian icon. And like I said, because I love uh, Back to the Future, he's, he's just one of the best. So if there'd be any way he could, you know, show up on set for a day and, you know, film a scene, I'd, I'd be ecstatic. So that would be kind of like my number one dream would be to just be able to work with him even for like a moment. Very interesting. And what would, what would the movie be like? Describe to us, let us envision what the movie would be like that you would make. <laughs> well, I mean, right now, I mean, if we're going for what I'm aiming for in the near future, this, I just started now, it's kind of an unromantic comedy, I guess. It starts okay. off with a couple breaking up, and then we kind of flash back throughout the whole relationship, how they met, how they got there, and we go back and forth between them, you know, actually being fairly mature in the breakup, which is something that doesn't really happen in movies these days, and just kind of talking through it. And, you know, telling a lot of random jokes and maybe a little bit of drama here and there. But yeah, it would be more low budget and very dialogue heavy. But that would kind of be the, the start of it. And then from there, you know, I'd try and build things up into something a little more sci-fi, a little more action -y. But you, know, you need to prove yourself first in something smaller budget. So. And Jason, when did you develop a love for writing? Uh, my writing's been there pretty much almost my whole life. Uh, basically, since I could hold a pencil, I think in second grade, they had us write a rap short story in elementary school, and I just I picked up a pencil and just created something out of thin air. So it's kind of the one thing I've always done and like to do, and it's just it's stuck with me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, hopefully, at that point, I'll either uh, you know made a few short films and I'm on the road to making my feature film. And you know, as a backup plan, I'm hoping to also have a novel or two written and published as well. So, gotta stay motivated and productive. Yeah, and I know in a lot of your posts, you write a lot about you know being shy and that kind of thing. So, you know, what advice do you have for people to put yourself out there, even if you are shy, to put your work out there? It can be tough. I mean, yeah, I'm an introvert and I've had my issues with shyness and I guess self-doubt. And so the first few times you try and put anything out there, it's it's terrifying, especially if you don't get all of those immediate lights from anybody. And so it looks like everybody hates your work, but you just got you just to keep doing it. I mean, you, you, you'll always be your own worst enemy and you'll be your harshest judge. And I mean, all of a sudden somebody else will like it and they're like, this is great. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, you just gotta give it time. So, and let's keep putting it out there because there, there'll always be somebody that responds. It doesn't have to be everybody because you'll never make everybody happy. But if you can make even one person happy or entertain them, then that's already satisfying enough, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very true. Putting your content out there. I, I know when I started, I would always be nervous. I'm like, should I post this? Should I not? And then after a while, you're like, you know what? This is good content. I'm going to post it no matter what. And when you feel like that, people will like it because you're you're fine with it. So it's like a, the law of attraction. You're just attracting people to like it because you're confident with it. So I completely agree with that. <laughs> and you can't you can't tell stories if you don't ever share your stories or anything. People, I mean, if you keep them for yourself, that's great. But Either way, you're going to have to just, you know, take that leap and then there's no turning back. And that's, that's the best way to do it. Just put it out there. Absolutely. And where can our viewers connect with you on social media and learn more about your work? Yeah, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and even YouTube. It's all at a dry, cool wit. And I usually will promote any of my work there. If I have any specific accounts for my work, uh, I'll link to them as well. So yeah, Twitter and Instagram is where I'm most active. YouTube, there's a couple of things, and hopefully in the near future, I'll randomly post a few more either video essays or podcasts on there as well when I have spare time. But. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for being on the show today. I'm sure you're going to be a massive success. Oh. Uh, you're a great writer, and thank you again for all of the support over the years. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad to have you on my show. <laughs> oh, well, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. It's, 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 this is a new experience for me, and I'm honored. Great. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.